we've created a special offer just for listeners of the podcast. You can get the book, A World of Creativity, for a special price of $5.98 for paperback. And the Kindle version is only 99 cents. Go to mark-stinson.com to take advantage of this special offer. Tap into your most original thinking, organize your ideas, and create the opportunities to launch your creative work. Unlocking your world of creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. Welcome back, friends, to our podcast, Unlocking Your World of Creativity. And on this podcast, as we've explored creative practitioners' processes and habits, we've often heard from them about the personal work of creativity, but also then comes the collaboration and the teamwork and even leadership behind that creativity. And we'll explore that today with our guest, Dan Rockwell. Dan, welcome to the show. Well, Mark, thank you so much for having me today. Dan is a self-proclaimed leadership freak. That's the name of his blog and his platform. But he's also the author of a forthcoming book, The Vagrant, the subtitle, The Inner Journey of Leadership. His co-author is John David Mann of Go-Giver fame. And Dan, I think we'll just start there, this inner journey. I was expecting a leadership book of some maxims, four points to grow as a leader, but this is a personal gut punch. You got me on page three of a very personal story. Why do you feel that leadership is such a personal journey? Thanks, Mark, for saying that. When I started writing Leadership Freak, I thought it was about tell people the five things to do. And I do that pretty regularly because we do need skills. We do need strategies. We do need techniques. But I had three conversations in the course of a couple of months, and it's been 10 years ago now, that completely rocked my world. The first one was with the C- the former CEO of Southwest Airlines, Jim Parker. Jim was the CEO of Southwest when they when the 9-11 happened. He wrote a book, and when they sent it to me and they said, would you like to talk to the author? I was like, that's a no-brainer. So I asked Jim, what's your favorite word of advice? And he gave me the most underwhelming word of advice I think I have ever ex- received. Now, obviously, I didn't say that. Yes. And I hope he, I hope he doesn't see this. But actually... He said, what I love to tell leaders is be yourself. Now, I'm a farm boy from Maine. I don't care about being myself. I just want to go out there. I got to do my chores. I got to do my business. And I didn't know what he meant, really. Took me a while to figure it out. During that same time frame, I had a second conversation with Frances Heschelbein. Frances gave me, she's received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And she was the CEO of the Girl Scouts and just so highly regarded. She said, when I was there to receive the medal, I thought I should say something smart or intelligent because everybody has to give a little talk. And she said, I decided to give my definition of leadership. And she said, leadership is a matter of how to be, not how to do. Again, freaks me out. And I didn't really get a glimmer of what it all meant until I had a conversation with Harry Kramer, who is the, was the former CEO, was the CEO of Baxter Pharmaceutical. Harry has written two books, and I've talked to him both times. Every time he talks about it, t- writes, he writes about self-reflection. I said, Harry, you're a one-string banjo. He said, it's the most important thing you can do. Now, those three conversations started to caused me to realize Warren Bennis was right. Warren's definition of leadership is very similar to Francis. He said that leadership is becoming yourself. And that message is so transformative and yet elusive to especially leaders who are high performers and they're excited to get stuff done. And so often the people I work with, They've lost themselves to work, to the role. They don't know who they are anymore. And they need to find themselves. And that, by the way, seeing that happen, it's a wonderful thing to see happen. To watch it. 
And that yes. Warren Bennis quote is one of the few quotes that you open in an introduction to the book. And if I just could add to the ellipses to that quote, it says it's a simple task, yet difficult. Why is it seemingly simple, but so difficult to become yourself? Yes, it should be easier, shouldn't it? You would think so. We carry ourselves <laughs> around all the time. <laughs> all the time. I think one of the reasons it's difficult now, do you want to know this? Why? what's simple about it or what's difficult? About well, that's it? a good question. Let's go with the difficult. <laughs> All right. I think it's difficult because from birth, we learn to be a people pleaser. And I'm a pleaser and I want people to like me. And so we lose ourselves to that. So it's our parents first. We want to please our parents then we want to please the teachers. And then we want to please a girlfriend or a boyfriend. And then we want to please a boss. And somewhere along the line, we wake up and we realize we hate our work, we hate ourselves, or maybe we love what we used to love it, but we don't love it anymore. And we're not looking forward to all of the responsibilities. And so we've lost ourselves. I think we have midlife crisis because of this too. And, it, and that can go very badly or it can go really <laughs> yes, great. Depends on the self-reflection. I think that's part of it. And let's go to the title of the book, Dan, The Vagrant. I Again, I was imagining the certainly the man experiencing homelessness, but I was not expecting the definition of the bird it was off track of the migration. But certainly the character has some deviation from the path. You're not going, it's not going, you're not going the way you intended. You're not being received or responded to in the way you think you should be. All of these things are embodied in that title, for me anyway, as I read the book. What was your intention with that grabber of a title, The Vagrant, especially when it comes to leadership? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for noticing it. The idea of The Vagrant is you have this character who is, as the definition is, blown off course, totally oblivious. Now, this happens to high performers, highly motivated people. This happens to people who are have big goals. And what happens is they, they get blown off course. And sometimes they don't realize how they come across to other people. They don't realize how they're shooting themselves in the foot. And I think we've all been there doing things that we thought were going to work, <laughs> and <laughs> they just blew up. And so you have this person who is sincere and really wants to do well, like everybody who would read it, and yet is blown off course and really struggles. And there was this, speaking of creativity as our subject here, the, these were my ideas. I tried to fake that there was a team involvement. I oh, moved yeah. my lips and I said the word team, but I really knew it was me. <laughs> That's some of the stumbling over ourselves that you observed, certainly, and that you also try to bring out in the book. Oh, it's part of my life. It's part of, I think, most of our lives. I took the VIA assessment. It's a character assessment. And the point of it is to show you the top things that you are most, that you do most naturally. I have this top five things, but it gives you a list of 24. And you know what everybody does. I, You know what I did? I went to see what was at the bottom of the list. <laughs> Number 24, humility. Mm. I'll tell you a story to go with it. I One day I had this brilliant idea, and I've been tinkering with writing on a book on humility for years. And when the first idea hit me, I went out. My wife was on the back deck. It was a beautiful summer day. She's this one. We've been married since we were teenagers. We have a wonderful relationship. I walked out on the deck and I said, I've decided I'm going to write a book. And she said, oh, really? And what's the book about? And I said, humility. And she burst into laughter. <laughs> <laughs> I love the contradiction, so, right? <laughs> yeah. So I decided to write on something that they say, write what you know. I decided to write what I didn't know. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> and your studies 
your degrees, both in the business and science, the construction and design side of your brain, but then also theology and ministry. And maybe that's what you were thinking of with the humility piece. I'm also interested, Dan, in those overlaps of skills and just how the brain works <laughs> from your point of view. In relation to? The combination of these sort of what I would call hard skills construction and design, and what many people would label soft skills of the theology and ministry? Yeah, wonderful question. I'm so thankful for that broad kind of experience and those that different kind of focus of hands-on versus soft. And I think that is very helpful. These days, emotional intelligence has emerged as a, a key success factor for people who are in leadership. And again, when I, like I said, 12 years ago, when I started writing Leadership Freak, I thought it was about these are the five ways to lead the best meeting in the world. And that's very important. But if you don't know how people are perceiving you, if you don't know, you, you can't f have a sense of how they are responding, you're floundering. So the soft side of things has been important. Things like purpose, too, matter a lot. So when you think about theology, ministry, you think about the inner person, you think about purpose, you think about drives, you think about those kind of things as well. That's been, I'm thankful for that wide background. And Dan, yeah. you've had a bird's eye view of these characteristics over a lot of industries. Yeah, I was looking at your client list, Chick-fil-A, NIH, Home Depot, Royal Caribbean. There's barely a thread that goes through these, even procurement professional. I like the idea of the soft skills of purchasing agents. But, but looking across these industries, you must have seen some commonalities of both the developmental needs and the leadership strengths that you saw among people in these different corporate entities. Yes, one of the things I love is that there are the people who really thrive and succeed do have some things in common. They love people. They want people to do well. And I've talked with sometimes people that they just are all about the numbers. And, and it, that also is a challenge. So I think we have in our brains this, it's either relationships or it's results. And what we learn is that it's results through relationships. And mm -hmm. that's an entirely different way of functioning. That really gets you thinking about soft skills, caring for people, bringing out their best. Don't just set the numbers down and drive them and say, okay, you're going to get 10% bonus if you make it. So that, I think that aspect of it is, is delightful. And people thriving who are good at that. Very good. Thanks for sharing that. My guest is Dan Rockwell. He's the author of a forthcoming book called The Vagrant, The Inner Journey of Leadership. So Dan, I want to talk about the, the process of writing this book and your creative journey in developing it, certainly with your co-author, John David Mann. Maybe we can start there in the collaboration and how you decided to team up with an author like John. Okay. And I'm so thankful for John. Thanks for bringing him up. So I had this idea about the basic storyline and I had tried to write it and I write every day. I work on writing every single day. I got a whole section of my bookshelf. It's all books by Zinzer and all different people who are how to write and all of this. And I, every day I work on it. So I'm working on this the story, basically, which is a little of, I don't really do that every day. So I wrote out the story and I'm thinking about it and yeah, I, it's just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the aspects of being creative and successful in that space is to make sure to bring the right people into your life. And I started to think about who could really help craft a story. And I think John David Mann is the best. So I called him. I sent him a note. I called him. I said, hey, John, I have an idea for a story. I just gave him a quick synopsis. He said, Dan, he said, I got goosebumps. Let's do this. And he took what I what was like nuts and bolts and a car running on four cylinders instead of eight. 
And he just crafted that into something. I'm preparing to record it right now for Audible and those places. And so I'm having to go over it and over it again. And every time I go over it, I find something else. I just love the things he added. It's got layers and it's magnificent. So John is fantastic. And certainly from your standpoint, you can see his fingerprint. And Dan, this is in a great tradition of leadership parable books. Uh, certainly John David Mann's own Go-Giver, but Og Mandino, I think of Moving My Cheese and One Minute Managing and all the other great parable books. Why did you decide that the story was the way to get these points across rather than yeah. maybe the five maxims? <laughs> Yeah, my next book is going to be much more like that. I shouldn't say that. It's still, you know what? I may become a one-string banjo like <laughs> Harry Kramer because yes. I want to think about self-reflection. I want it anyway. But um, what I'm working on now will probably be more traditional. But I had the story. I wanted to get into the publishing space. And apart from writing the blog, which I did every day, which I do still do every day. And that's when I thought about John. He has so many books under his belt. And I so when I talked to him, I said, look, John, this is my first experience in publishing. I've dealt with a lot of authors, a lot of publishers, because that all the books behind me, they've been sent to me for free. And so I understand the business somewhat, but really, and I just said, I want somebody to hold my hand through this whole process. So you're the boss. You, you tell me. And anytime I thought something, I would say something and he would say this and this and I'd go, oh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I'm, it's been fantastic. Our publisher has been fantastic. And But I have so much more comfort now mm -hmm. because I had an expert walk beside me through that whole journey. Oh, I'm so thankful for that. There's almost a leadership lesson right there, isn't there? To have I somebody beside be. you. Yes. <laughs> and besides just a great story, and it does end, uh, and I warn myself not to get into spoiler alert territory here, but then you do follow up with almost a book club or a discussion kind of section of the book, fun reflection, some exercises to think about, some steps to go through to, to study the book, not just say what a great story. Why did you decide to close the book with some exercises for the reader? Yeah. There is in me, uh, and I think in John as well, the idea that you have to have something to do. You just, it's not the, it's not the only thing, but it needs to be there. And I think the exercises at the end, we wanted them uh, to be, some of them to be a little non-traditional, kind of a, approach it in a little different way. And self-reflection could be thought of as, I'm just going to sit under this tree and empty my mind. And there's a place for that, obviously. But for leaders, I think there's a different kind of reflection. And so I wanted to put some legs to the things that I'd been learning from other people and that had been brought up to me 10 years ago, that you really need to practice this. And I'll tell you this, Mark, when I bring this up to new clients and young leaders in particular, and I'll say, so tell me, what's your self-reflection practice? They look at me like a cow looks at a new gate. <laughs> Who has time for that? So it, uh, to me, it's so important. And so I'm glad that at the end, we do have some very practical things people can do. And you mentioned this self-reflection. I, I guess I think about in the context of the story and this book and what we need to learn from it, we don't mean the self-congratulation kind of reflection. The end of the week, look at all the things I accomplished, and all the blue ribbons I won. You mean self-reflection, the yes, wins and yes, the losses. definitely. The wins and the losses. And what am I learning? And what did I try to do? And did that work out? And I, I, frustration is a part of life. It's a big part of my life. And what am I feel? When, where am I feeling recurring frustration? And what do I want to do about it? Because anger sometimes is about your something's wrong with you and you need to change. And so it's a it reflects that shift that I continue to try to go through, where leadership is really about changing me first versus trying to fix everybody else. 
fixing everybody else is so fun. It is. <laughs> Not really. It, but it but you know what I'm saying? It off of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. So Dan, you mentioned your publisher and the contribution and role that they've had in getting the book up and out. I think about the creatives who are listening to our podcast, and they might be an author, they might be a songwriter or you know, any kind of an entrepreneur looking for funding or looking for customers. But let's talk about the role of your publisher, in this case, Ben Bella Books, in getting the work up and out, the connections that needed to be made. What do you feel their role was and how did you work with them as a bit of a learning for some of our listeners? Yes, that's a great question. And it, w- it was all learning for me. I was always on the receiving side of publishers and publicists. And could, would you do this? And what they did with you, Mark. Yes, that's why we're here. No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. First of all, John had felt like Ben Bella was one of the best at helping to market books. And one of the complaints I heard, I hear from authors is once you get your book published, the publisher forgets you. And I'm not naming any names or anything, but it was a complaint. It is a complaint that I hear. Ben Bella has is really known for helping with the marketing. But it, right from the very beginning, the manuscript is submitted, they go over it, and then you have several different iterations of editors who check this and check that. And that was enlightening and useful. And that see, because I want to, my real goal is to become a better writer. When they send back something that is edited, and it's got some red lines in it and suggestions, it's, I'm thankful. I said, oh, I didn't think, I didn't see that. Or, gee, that is so much better. Let me say this too, because your audience might appreciate John's approach to this on some of it. And that is, he said, whenever someone tells you something's not working in the text, they're probably right. When they tell you how to fix it, they're probably wrong. (laughs) (laughs) I can hear John saying that. Yes. 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 And I love that. Yeah. So anyway, Ben Bell is great. They're just fantastic. Thanks for sharing your experience on that. Listeners, my guest has been Dan Rockwell. He's the author of The Vagrant, The Inner Journey of Leadership, co-authored with John David Mann. It'll be out in September of this year. It's on pre-order now, so be sure to take advantage of that from Ben Bella Books, as we've been talking about. Dan, I couldn't end the podcast here without summarizing and maybe asking for your advice, talking person to person to a listener who might be about to be knocked off course. I think of the vagrant definition of a bird blown off the migratory or the journey that they've been on. Somebody out there thinks they're going upstairs for a promotion. They might be fired. They might be knocked off course in some way. What would you say to that creative individual going through that experience? Yes. Wonderful question. I think we should all live with an assumption that we are, we need to constantly adjust, that we need to constantly bring different people into our lives. We need to constantly be asking ourselves uh, about how we're doing. We need to constantly be reflecting on where life seems to be going. But the external voices are so powerful. My thought on that is that assume you are off course in some areas of your life. Just make that assumption and then start inquiring not with yourself, but also with others. Invite other people, invite feedback in. And when they say something to you about how they perceive you, they are right. It doesn't feel right but they are right. Now, they may offer a solution that might not work, but you may come across differently than you actually think you come across. You may be blown off course. You may not see the situation. You don't see the whole situation. My my thought on that is assume that the winds are blowing you off course some and you need to constantly adjust. And as you have said in one of your blogs, it's even if it's just a little bit off course, it's going to take you to a whole different destination than you intended. So even if you think, I'm just a little bit off, it's a good time to adjust. Yes. Very good. Thanks for that. Well, folks, my guest is Dan Rockwell, and I really appreciate the conversation, Dan. It's been so good and so helpful. 
Thank you. I'm so thankful for you, Mark. I've listened to your podcast and so much variety. So wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. You bet. And listeners, this is the kind of input we need on our creativity and our leadership. And so we appreciate so much Dan's experience. You can read more of his blogs on leadershipfreak.blog, and then we'll be sure to pick up the book when it's available, The Vagrant, The Inner Journey of Leadership. And come back again next time, listeners. We're going to continue our around-the-world journeys talking to creative practitioners. We love to talk to them about not only how they get inspired, but how they organize ideas, how they gain the confidence and the connections to get their work up and out into the world. So until next time, I'm Mark Stenson, and we're unlocking your world of creativity. We'll see you next time. Unlocking your world of creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. This program was produced by BSB Media, creators of IntelliKey Leadership Stories, Unlocking Your World of Creativity, and ThePeaceRoom.Love. If you like this podcast, here's another show that you'll like from BSB Media. The Patients Speak, Healthcare Innovations Accelerating the Patient Journey. It features interviews with healthcare leaders, patient advocates, medical providers, and researchers. Presented by 83Bar. Look for The Patients Speak on your favorite podcast app.